Okay, we've um, removed the stator off of the front of the generator just in the name of research just to um, have a closer look at this and see if we can work some things out as to how the generator is actually working. So far what I know is use a motor as well, the battery hooked up, we push our start button and from the start button this thick wire that goes into these windings our coils and then it comes out and goes to ground now with the brushes themselves there's two insulated ones which are bridged together and also bridged to another three winding, uh, another three wires one of these wires goes through to the um, big inductor the other one goes through to ground, uh, which is the box itself. It has a copper strip inside, and that of course is hooked to the ground with the battery on the other side. And the third winding uh, comes from the start button. Um, with the segments on the rotor, there's 47 of them, which is a little odd to me as I always thought they were an even division of the number of coils you have but in this case they are not what I found with that um, in all points of time at least three brushes are connected to uh, sorry the brushes are connected to three segments of the rotor so we're going to do a continuity test on each segment of the rotor um, and as you'll see they are all joined so they're all linked together um, if we have a look at the ohms, I have run around and measured it already so we don't have to spend all night doing this. But all zero ohms or 0.1 ohm, um, even all the way around the other side. We do have a five and a half ohm resistor with an ignition coil here. Reading six, I do have my fingers touching the two terminals as well, so it says 5.5 ohms, so very close to it. But every segment gives us a reading of about 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Now the reason I believe they're so low is because I'll take the camera off the stand now. <coughs> the windings are very very thick and there's very few of them and they all go in the same direction. I don't know if you can see in the camera but there's one thick one and one slightly thinner one right next to it and it's the same on each one some of them aren't that clear because some have got a lot of paint on them but this one here you can clearly see the two size differences in the wire um, so that is how that arrangement is set up Okay, a little bit more about the box. I'm just going to try and see if I can get this light lead a little longer. I do have lights in the shed, but it's pretty poor. It is at night, so I just decided to grab this lead light. It's off cable tied to the fan. And so we can have a closer look inside the box here as well. There's the heavy inductor now. The that nut in there is uh, 
has the cable from the coils hooked up to it which is one side of that inductor and it's also hooked up to that box down the back as hard as I try I cannot read the writing on it as it is too faded um, and we come out of this inductor and we go back into this switch here now I have worked out what this switch is for you like to stay in one spot here. This here actually comes on once the generator starts. Now the reason they have that there is when you push the start button, current flows through one way, starts the generator. If the generator windings were hooked up to the battery as well, we'd just make a complete loop and probably the two would be fighting each other. So once the um, generator is started and you take your finger off the button this then pulls in when you start drawing current and allows the current to flow back to your battery and there is also a little condenser from ground to the positive output um, maybe an attempt to smooth out the pulses that you would have seen when I put the scope across it on the cell the HHO cell which is actually hooked up to at the moment um, not very good light, I'm trying to keep it out the road that is our 5 ohm wire wound pot now with that the more we decrease the ohms on the pot the more current the generator puts out so that would indicate that it is um, producing a stronger magnetic field within the exciter windings thus giving the generator windings a stronger magnetic field and we get more current from it just playing around with the white light here so that is pretty much what we have um, very low resistance on all windings all windings have continuity through them and uh, they're very thick and very few from what I can tell I'm not quite sure if there is more windings under this paper stuff here and they just have the wires that are going to the armature exposed or if that two, the two windings are all that there is around each segment of the rotor so that's basically the machine I have done some research on the net but I cannot find very much on it now the funny thing is it says 15 volts at a maximum of what's that say 20 amps um, at 2400 RPM now the thing is this thing at the moment on this engine is set up to do roughly 1500 RPM is what it's pulling and I can peg 60 amps on a 12 volt battery which actually lifts the battery voltage up to about 24 volts which is not good for the battery so I believe severely underrated judging by the size of those windings there and from what I can tell the windings in the coils and it can certainly produce a whole lot more than what they've rated it at so that's uh, pretty much well it I, will, I would like to be able to clean that box up a little more and see what the numbers are but it just seems like they're too far faded I'll have a go at it after I've shot this video and um, see if I can make any sense of the numbers or what the box actually is that is bridging the inductor and the switch, magnetic switch ok well that's it for me let's see if we can't get some answers as to exactly how this machine works cheers <laughs>